You're welcome to this um, session. I am Israel Lolasukomi, Educational Technology Unit, Department of Science and Technology Education, University of Ibadan. Today we'll be talking about programmed learning paradigms. Programmed learning paradigms. We have three of them that we're going to be talking about. One, linear program, branching program, and adjunct program. Now we consider the linear program or extrinsic model, which we also call Skinnerian program. This is named after B.F. Skinner. And the characteristics of this program includes the following. Number one, it has very small frame, each consisting of about just two sentences with a key word or words omitted. In this case, again, the students read the frame and then they write or construct a term. Number three, correct response is provided in the next frame where the next bit of information is given and also all students progress from the first frame to the second frame and so on to the end following the same sequence regardless of what type of response they give that is to say whether they are wrong or right they proceed it is linear just like that if you look at the image on the screen it shows you the direction the arrow shows that the student or the learner moves from a to b to c there are no branches number two is the branching program this is also known as the intrinsic or branching program and that's derived from the works of norman crowder so it's called crowderian program as well in this case the frames are larger one to three short paragraphs of information are provided and after reading through the student or the organism taking that program is exposed to multiple choice questions the number of options must be more than two that's to minimize guesswork you know choosing the correct answer by chance that's not allowed in the criterion program. The students choose one of these and their choice determines the next frame. If they are wrong, they are so informed and then they are given a reason why they were wrong. And then they are, they are offered further choices. Or the same question is framed. The same information is presented with the original frame. If you look at the image you have on the screen, you see that the candidate or the student, the learner, can move from A to B if he completed the task in A and he got the answers correctly. Then he moves to B. He could move to C because he has mastered what is in B, got what is in C, got what is in D. That's a fast stream. But if after attempting A, the questions attached to frame A, you did not get it, it may be referred to F, as you can see on the screen there. Or go through another pattern, A to E. At E, he is given a remedial. Then it moves to G, that letter in the circle there that looks like C is actually G. It moves from A to E to G and back to B. It is when he has mastered what the content of A is, which is repackaged in E and repackaged in C until the person gets it, then it moves to B. Those are patterns of branching programming. Let's see, what do we do therefore as teachers or instructional designers to prepare the program learning material? Preparation of a pro of program learning material. Number one, you choose a small significant subject matter area. That's the topic. Choose a small significant subject matter area, the topic. Number two, you define your target population. 
who is to use it? Then you specify your instructional objectives that describe the terminal behavior. What do we mean by terminal behavior? It means at the end of that interaction with the material, what the learners will be doing after the instruction. The next one is that you perform a task analysis of the competencies to be taught and learned. The next one is to perform a behavioral analysis so as to identify the learning conditions. Under what conditions will the learner be able to move to the next? Then you prepare the criterion tests. All those multiple choice questions, you prepare them and then you choose a programming paradigm. Whether screenarian, which is the linear, or is the branching one, which is the crowdarian. So you write the frames, you make use of psychopedagogical principles that have been discussed earlier on, and perhaps more of them. Then you edit the frames, making use of comments from knowledgeable colleagues some sort of validating what the content is on the relevant other people who have read through the frames. Then you try out the program. You try it out on representatives of the target population before you can uh, certify that that is okay for the use of the group you have prepared it for. So in this video, we've considered the paradigms of the program learning. We we'll talked about the linear and the branching kind of program. We've considered the characteristics of the linear program as well as the characteristics of the branching program. In the next video, we shall be talking about the third paradigm, that's the adjunct. Thank you.